An achievement that is as rarefied as the art itself. We'd like to welcome artist Dante Hayes, whose latest piece is now a permanent part of the Gibbs Museum of Art. Congratulations, Dante, and thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you for having me. I'm so excited to um, be back in Charleston. You know, can you tell us about the piece that found its forever home at the Gibbs? Yes. Well, first of all, um, in last year, I had the um, greatest honor to be the uh, um, winner of the 1858 um, um, prize for um, Southern Art that the Gibbs Museum um, does every year. And I um, asked them if it would be uh, possible if I could make a piece specifically for the um, Gibbs Museum and Charleston to um, present my uh, work and research. And they really loved that instead of just me just bringing one of my older pieces to the museum. And now it's amazing that this piece is now in the permanent collection. So the work is um, basically based on the research of the pineapple. And in, everyone that knows about Charleston, you see pineapples everywhere. Oh, yes. An idea of welcoming hospitality. But, you know, actually, and as well as being February, being Black History Month, there's actually some more history to it. Because for me, Black history is every day. And um, the pineapple actually history comes from being welcoming hospitality came from the idea of colonialism and mm. uh, enslavement. They would put a pineapple in the, the docks to notify new shipments of enslaved Africans have arrived. So this wow. piece is a representation of the idea of sanctuary that even through hardships, you know, black and brown people could still find a sanctuary and a home. And, and Charleston is a beautiful place to find home. It certainly mm -hmm. is. <clears throat> And the the name of the piece, Sanctuary, but knowing that it has that kind of a history, do you find that there is somewhat of a um, disparity between that word sanctuary, the image of right. the pineapple, the meaning that we kind of live by today, but then what in reality the history of it was? Yeah, well, I always see it more like a remix, you know, like we're we're learning our history through this object. And understanding that, you know, through pain and hurt you and trauma, you can find and make a new environment for yourself. And, be, you know, so it's like you can actually push through those things if we choose to, yeah. you know, if we choose to talk about those things and choose to be accountable to the things that happened in the past to improve the future. And so many black um, people in Charleston have created a beautiful home there, despite mm -hmm. all that past. So that reason why I wanted to, it's like a, a, it's a object of love now, saying that, yes, it, we came from a wrong reason, but we took over and we said that, yes, this is a beautiful place too. And even though the bad things are happening, we are going to um, put our environment and our, our thoughts into this place. I think that is such a powerful message because, you know, they always say, you know, if you forget your history, you're doomed to repeat it. But then when you take something that has historic significance, hmm such as what you just described, but then, like you say, it's a remix. So it's it's taking on something that really should be positive, that everybody can come together and celebrate this thing mm -hmm. that we, we can all feel as even more bonded as a community. Yeah, and also to know that um, we have so much to grow. You know, like when we see this piece and we see um, things that are happening in our society and seeing mm -hmm. things not happening, um, um, positively and equitable to the black and brown people in Charleston, you can remind it like, we have this symbol here. Let's do the right thing. Let's do the right thing for everyone, not just one group of people. It's truly an inspired piece. Um, what is the piece actually composed of? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the, um, the entire sculpture is actually ceramics. It's clay. So once it's fired, if you saw it in my studio before it was fired, you would have just thought it was brown clay but it actually has no glaze on it. And then once it's fired, it actually turns black. So oh, wow. that's where you see that coloring come from, from the oh, fire. Fascinating. So, yep. That is so interesting. And is this a medium that you usually work in or do you work in all types of media? Uh, I primarily now work in ceramics, but I also, you know, draw and paint. And if I'm not doing ceramics, I'm usually doing, you know, some kind of printmaking, especially now during COVID. It's hard to have a studio um, with ceramics because a lot sure. of things have been closed. So I usually draw or paint or do my prints at home. That's why. Are you working on anything now? 
Um, right now, um, I'm preparing um, for some things for some shows in next year and, and things of that nature. But I will be having some of my artwork in a show in Atlanta this week. Oh, wonderful. Okay. So, um, so people can actually meet you as well? Um, I won't be able to be there because of okay. COVID, but, you know, at least my work is there. <laughs> yes, that, that's what matters. <laughs> Absolutely. Right? When it's safe enough to do so, we will be so looking forward to welcoming you and seeing you at the Gibbs. Congratulations yes, again, Dante. Uh, just a wonderful, beautiful piece and a tribute to uh, people and a place. Yes. Thank you and so much for that. Dave, I just want to say thank you to the Gibbs Museum for this opportunity and also to um, um, be able to like push the idea of like artists of color being in uh, museums. So that's a really powerful thing that they're continuing to do that. Most so thank definitely. you. Thank you. We'll be back after this.